What is up, fellow thermonuclear AFers? As we used to say in the Discord, don't say as much anymore. So what's up, thermonuclear AFers? I am Nava Valley coming at you with another Hardware Knox episode. Before we get started, just a reminder, whether you're listening to this via podcast or on YouTube, uh, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a ton, especially on YouTube at this point. Like videos, comment on them, subscribe to us. That all helps the algorithm make YouTube love us back a little bit as we continue to build up this community. What I want to talk about is the scenario that I don't know if enough people are talking about, or it's just something I started pondering. Would the Jazz consider actually letting this leak into the season? And the whole point of the Rudy Gobert trade was they got so much because they made it clear that they were going to, they were okay with keeping him. It's a little bit different now with Donovan Mitchell because you can convey that sentiment, but you've already started blowing up your team. And so it just gets like super fucking awkward. If you go into the regular season with Donovan Mitchell on the roster, uh, is Mike Conley and William Bogdanovich and Jordan Clarkson all still there? What is, what is going on with that? Um, So, you know, you're this team in transition. I don't view Donovan Mitchell as for all this talk about him wanting out of Utah. I don't know. Like there, and the reports of like rifts between fit with him and Rudy Gobert, that shit happens in the NBA. There's not like reports of Donovan Mitchell being this shitty teammate or a human being. So I don't know that he would agitate to get out just because he's heard his name in trade rumors. I think it's also worth noting while people have expected the trade demand to come, uh, and that report that he's unhappy in Utah, like he's not the one as at least as far as we know right now, that is driving this. It's the jazz because they were exploring a rebuild. That's fine. Um, So I, if you bring him back, I'm like weirdly okay with it. And I'll get into why, because I don't think he becomes a disruptor. Uh, I also don't think that this jazz roster is currently constructed. I guess you could be worried about Mitchell's value being hurt because you'll suck. But I also don't think the good part of that is I still think you'll be kind of bad. Uh, even if you don't trade Conley and William Bogdanovich, like it's not going to s- screw with your one season tank and you have a whole season to get it done. Now, the reason you would wait is maybe you're playing a game of chicken with the Knicks, but also we're at sort of like the optimistic point of the NBA offseason. Like we're soon going to get into even more reports. Definitely going to go into training camp. Everybody lost 15 pounds while somehow putting on 10 pounds of extra muscle though and decreasing their body fat per- percentage in a healthy way in the single digits. Um, they gained just 25 pounds of muscle if they were frail over a six week period, because that's totally humanly possible and definitely happen. Teams are getting content with their rosters. Um, maybe not if you're in the Kevin Durant sweepstakes, it does feel like we're waiting on more moves right now than normal in part because of the Mitchell and Kevin Durant stuff, holding up transactions, uh, what's going on with Colin Sexton in Cleveland. So you could make that case that there is a little bit more unrest, but if you wait, Could there be a team that starts the regular season piss poor and they decide, oh, we need to go all in on this Donovan Mitchell trade? And one, it could be the Knicks if you're Utah. Like if they're drawing a hard line in the sand where it's like they only want to give three picks and like, I don't know, Grimes and Toppin and then they they want you to take on Randall or Fournier. um, You could wait them out if they get, if they just even get off to like a four and seven start or something ridiculous, like not even non-ridiculous like that. But after receiving the criticism that they have and going after Brunson Brunson and clearly the urgency with which they've at least tried to get or have been eyeing other stars since Leon Rose came aboard. Do we really like, isn't there a possibility that they then go all in and they up their offer because they realize, Oh, we're not as good without Donovan Mitchell. Do you risk also like the offers getting worse from them? No. And that's why I think that it's feasible that you could wait because is the Knicks, Let's say the Knicks' best offer right now. Is it going to get any worse if you wait to go into the season? They're not a team that's going to worry about disrupting their roster in the middle of the year. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you that right now. They're not a team that's going to worry about that. So I think if you're just so sort of turned off by what everyone else is offering and you're not, you don't want the Knicks package right now, maybe you can't get as many of their first round picks unprotected into the future as you want. I would wait it out just to see, or maybe going into the training camp, they decide to, to um, just up their ante. And so it feels like Utah might have more leverage there. And then it also increases to me, the likelihood that does another team come over the top and it's, I don't know what Miami's best offer is right now, but do they get into a scenario where like, do they actually figure out a way to get other first round picks to send to the jazz Uh, is, are there surprise teams that does that become um, part of this in the middle of the year? Those are harder to spot. Uh, and like, I don't really know what you, like what you get into, like, is, is Orlando good enough to where like, well, maybe we should consider a Donovan Mitchell trade because we're, we're too good right now. 
Uh, does Toronto get off to a slower start or decide to get involved with the Donovan Mitchell sweepstakes because they missed out on Kevin Durant, which would be sort of the other flip side of this is if a team gets Kevin Durant, uh, there are going to be other jilted teams out there. Would they consider joining the, the Donovan Mitchell sweepstakes at that point? Um, I don't, I don't know if they would, I think in itself, it could be valuable just to wait to see if the Knicks drive up their offer and I get that I'm having trouble spotting surprise suitors right now. I did think about this before I came on, but like a, a Cleveland or something, they have they didn't do much over the offseason. Granted, they weren't very flexible. Mitchell's a very intriguing fit there. Um, does something happen in the middle of the year after they've resigned Colin Sexton where he could be used as salary fodder? You have Karis LeVert, where they're just more willing to do something nuclear when it comes to maybe just trading away their entire draft since they're on this. You know, you look at their core and it's not an immediate timeline, but at the same time, Allen and Mobley. And uh, Dar- Darius Garland, like that's a real legitimate triple, like three player base there. And if you bring back Colin Sexton, they made the trade with Karis LeVert uh, because they clearly like view themselves. And like I was fine with the trade for Karis LeVert last year, um, but I'm saying they made that trade because th- there is some immediacy there. And so do they come over the top with something? Uh, I don't think a team like Detroit or Indiana would get involved. Though I've been on the record saying like Indiana would be like kind of sneaky fun. What about Memphis? Like if they just, I actually really hate the fit between Donovan Mitchell and John Morant, uh, even though Donovan Mitchell can play well off the ball. Are they like, do they fall off the feel good vibes and find out that they've leaned too far into their own development just because, you know, you let Kyle Anderson walk. You've now placed a lot of pressure on Zaire Williams, even Drake, Jake LaRavia and David Roddy. I shouldn't say maybe so much pressure, but you're clearly invested in like, continuing to develop what if that slows like could they decide to get involved in that uh i don't think like uh we know many won't do it milwaukee doesn't have the the assets new orleans should not be interested okc salary matching is too tough i suppose philly could all of a sudden be interested but aside from putting tyrese maxi on the table like they just don't have the pick equity to do it phoenix could be kind of interesting if they miss out on kevin durant it's the middle of the year uh january deandre is now trade eligible he can decline a trade um, but would he, he'd have a chance to be the guy in Utah and you could build out picks with that. I don't know how you feel about having Chris Paul, Donovan Mitchell and Devin Booker, but Donovan Mitchell and Chris Paul are tight. Uh, and Donovan Mitchell certainly gives you that, you know, third ball handler and look, the timeline podcast, I believe, I, I think it was them phrased it the best way that the Suns have a third best player problem right now, where it's very clearly Deandre Ayton, but do you trust that he has the self-creation enough to, uh, offset, what you're sort of losing or what it looked like you lacked a lot in the, not just this past postseason when you flamed out, but in the 2021 finals matchup with Milwaukee, you're smaller, but like Chris Paul's getting up there in age. Um, if you're allowed to keep Jay Crowder as part of that deal, you're definitely not keeping cam Johnson. Is there a way to get Donovan Mitchell without giving up Mikhail bridges? Because then that might make it a little bit more palatable. So that that's maybe a team. I already said I would love it if Orlando would get involved. Portland's not going to get involved. I don't think Sacramento would get involved. That would, that would be fucking wild. But does Washington figure out a way to increase the appeal of its offer? Maybe Kristaps is like off to a scorching start, but the Wizards aren't good enough. I kind of thought momentarily, what if the Bulls got involved? But they have DeRozan and Levine, and so like they've already traded away their, their 2025 pick. So they could, and you can realistically expect that 2025 pick to convey. It's top 10 protected. So like you can sort of go the, okay, 27 and 29 and like 27 expires immediately if it doesn't uh, convey, but it's, so, it's protected so far out that that even gets tough. So you only have Portland's 2023 first, your 2023 first is headed to Orlando and like you're getting into Alonzo Ball and Caruso. If Patrick Williams is involved and he's having a breakout year, okay, fine. But you need probably a wing more than you need Donovan Mitchell. And so I'm looking at a team like maybe Cleveland, Washington just figuring out a way to be even more aggressive. Maybe Charlotte figures out a way to be even more aggressive. Um, and of course, then there's, there's the Knicks. I mentioned the Raptors. Like it just feels like stuff happens in the season that changes everything. Could the Celtics, let's just say they get, they miss on the Kevin Durant sweepstakes or they opt not to trade for Kevin Durant, which I don't, I'm personally saying, I don't think they should. If it was like Jalen Brown and salary filler straight up to get to that salary filler, it costs you a rotation player though. Um, I might consider it, but let's just say, they pass on Kevin Durant or miss out on Kevin Durant, but then the season doesn't get like, it's just their offense. Let's just say is bunk. Do they consider like getting in on Donovan Mitchell? Um, can they do that without giving up Jalen Brown? If they're willing to include RW three and Marcus smart is in there, would you even consider Jalen Brown for Mitchell straight up at that point? 
even though wings are like most the most sought after commodity in the NBA, I'm not endorsing that, but I'm just saying like, could that happen? Uh, does something open up with Brooklyn? Just like they decide that they want to move on from Ben Simmons or KD is that's the other thing is like, let's just say KD is not traded uh, or, and so a few things could happen here. KD is not traded. Maybe Kyrie Irving does get traded. Um, maybe no one gets traded. Maybe everyone gets traded in Brooklyn, but KD gets traded in the middle of the year. Can you latch on to that third team deal? Because the Nets still want to win. They want out of Mitchell. Ben Simmons gets moved elsewhere. Is it a situation where maybe the Nets have both Kyrie and KD, but they still want to go the third ball handler approach? Wouldn't Utah be interested in like a package built around Ben Simmons and other stuff? I don't think that that's particularly likely, but I'm just saying even a, you know, Dallas, he'd be perfect, but just like, they're not going to be able to get the the pick equity is uh, they can give 2025, 20, basically 27 and 29 first round picks, a swap in 26 and, and 28 and 24. If they wanted to do that, and that's assuming their pick to New York conveys, but they just don't have the body equity. They have the salaries to match, but Utah would have to really love, you know, Josh Green, Jaden Harvey, uh, maybe Christian Wood a little bit. I'm just saying there are scenarios that could arise in the middle of the season because teams are going to be more reactive than they are right now when everything's sort of rosy. And so I'm, I just think there's a higher percentage chance than we're speaking about right now that Donovan Mitchell is on the jazz leading into the season. And my, my guess, my ultimate guess would be just because when you look at the trade landscape right now, it doesn't feel like there's any team that's bl- going to blow New York's best offer. Even if it's not what Utah considers New York's best offer, like New York is, we know they're still holding assets back. I think even with New York taking a reserved approach, it doesn't seem like there's a team that can come really over the top and beat them. That would realistically be interested in Donovan Mitchell. I think that could change if you wait until the season. Would I predict it? I still wouldn't. But when we know that right now it feels like New York is the field, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if the Jazz um, if the Jazz are going to wind up waiting. I just think it's a possibility there. And so let me know what you think about that. Uh, subscribe and whatnot to the podcast rate review if you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify or another podcast player. If you're on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a ton and the like button. 